All right, that's it for your news headlines today. Now we're going to send it over to John and your Sunrise What's Trending panel. So much, Rebecca. Yes, I'm joined with our panel this week, and we got a new panelist joining us today. That is, Yay. That is Johnny Awesome. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I got some big shoes to fill. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Filling in yeah. for Jay this week. Jay is on vacation, of course, overseas, enjoying the Basque Ireland. life over there. Yeah, Ireland. <laughs> so Hi. he's having fun. He's been posting pictures on his Facebook and stuff. I've been following him, so he looks like he's having a lot of fun. So Johnny will be filling in for Jay this morning. And Johnny, just tell us a little bit about yourself real fast. Uh, local promoter. I also do live and local on AM 560 in the mornings with Russ Clark and Cody Beeson and uh, just been a big part of the community been putting on shows for quite some time and I also host uh, Thursday and Saturday night at derailed if you want to come out oh, there you go. Saturday night so nice so a go. man of many tasks as we yeah. can see and <laughs> of course we have the always lovely Natasha Herzig who's a Hello. victims advocate yes, thank you. how are you doing, doing today Great. <laughs> good. I got my new hair. You I'm do. Ready, I know. It's good to go. hair she went from yeah. blonde to brunette, so you Looks look fabulous. great. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and then we got always the nice, talented Martha Guzman, with who is a former KYMA anchor and managing editor. So thanks for joining us, mm -hmm. Martha. Good to be back. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> let's get into our topics this morning. I'm interested to see how this new panelist is going to work out here this morning. So All right. Oh, man. <laughs> the first one is going to be the presidential debate. Of course, it was round two between Mitt Romney and President Barack Obama. The two. Uh, uh, had a town hall earlier this week where they actually were asked questions by independent voters. So I, my first question to you is, um, who do you think came out ahead and why? Uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll start. <laughs> I didn't see the debate the actual night of, but then I went to Facebook like I do every morning and I, I kind of saw, it looked like Obama was winning or it had won. Everybody was talking about how well Obama did and I put that up on my Facebook, got a lot of flack for it. A lot of people like, you know, doing conservative talk radio in the mornings. I got a lot of Republican friends like, what are you talking about? Did you even watch it? No, I said I didn't watch it, but I went ahead and watched it and uh, Obama came out strong. He came back and he kind of, was aggressive like he needed to be and I think he proved himself and it was interesting in a town hall type of debate where the audience is supposed to ask the questions it was uh, it was kind of neat to see him like oh Elizabeth that was a great question I appreciate that question but let me get back to Obama it was like tick for tag you know they were going at each other and Obama mm -hmm. came out pretty strong I would have to say all right I, I, I'll kind of you know, go next then. Um, yeah, I definitely think that we saw a much stronger, more aggressive Obama. You know, I, I would say Mitt Romney won round one and then, uh, you know, President Obama won round two. With that said, you know, I, I, there were times where I felt very uncomfortable because it, they come out, they came out swinging, swinging, I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I almost felt like at times um, Governor Romney was a little disrespectful towards the president. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that office, I think, commands a certain level of respect. And I, I've never seen that in any presidential a debate, uh, you know, in my lifetime, I just thought, wow, you know, I just felt a little uncomfortable mm -hmm. as they were going back and forth and, and pointing fingers at times. And so, um, but I'd have to say that Obama did come out um, stronger, more aggressive and on point. But you know what? That's up to for debate. You know, <laughs> each candidate, each party is going to defend their candidate. All so. right. So we got two for Obama, Obama Natasha. Where are you, Sam? Okay. I will start with saying <laughs> that the Republicans are going to say that Mitt Ron won mm -hmm. and that the Democrats are going to say Obama won. My personal opinion is that Mitt Romney won. Mm -hmm. And I will say that the facts don't lie once again. And he came out with the numbers and the statistics to say, this is where we're at. While well, you have been president for the past four years, this is what's happened. And we need change. Mm -hmm. And for that, I would say Mitt Romney won. All right. Now, I want to ask you guys. So we got two for Obama, one for Romney. But I want to ask you guys, how do you feel about the moderator? She got a lot of flack. The moderator was Candy Crowley, who you know works as a political analyst most of the time. Mm -hmm. but she got a lot of flack for her role in the whole situation, uh, the whole debate. So how do you guys feel about well, I'll her? I'll start off. Um, first of all, I have to say that I respect Hanny Crowley as a journalist. Mm -hmm. I think she's, uh, you know, I followed her for years and, and as a journalist, she's great. Her role as a moderator was to uh, guide the conversation and make sure that the questions were answered. Did all the questions get answered? No. What a tough position to be in. You have to tell the president to, hey, your time is up and, you know, Governor Romney. I think that she lacked a little control at times in terms of taking control of the situation. But I have to say, I do like her as a person, as a journalist. Maybe, uh, you know, Candy was a little uh, sweet on Obama, showing him a little too much sugar. You know, I think <laughs> she got, gave him a little bit more sweet time. Sweet Candy. Yeah, sweet Candy. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, 
Yeah. It's a hard position to be in, but you know, I think that she could have taken a little bit more control. Yeah. I definitely, right. definitely think she gave Obama a little bit of favor. When she was cutting Romney off, it was quick, mm -hmm. like Romney, Romney, over and over again, listen, stop. And then when it was Obama's and he went over, it was like, oh, stop Obama. And then it's like, he continued to go and continued to give his peace. And so I think she showed a little bit of favoritism mm -hmm. and it kind of, the setting favored Obama. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, Natasha, real fast. It's not about if she's a good journalist, journalist or not. It's about how she was as a moderator. She was completely more than biased. She was waving a flag saying, vote for President Obama. She interrupted Romney more than she did Obama. And she also interjected herself. And she also would lead to confirm what President Obama would, said. And then because of that, what happened to Karine Kali, she had to come back and she had to say, she had to retract her statement to confirm that the lies mm -hmm. that President Obama had said. Mm -hmm. So do you think she'll be asked again to do another debate, yes or no? Well, they're all about the liberal media doing the debate, so <laughs> maybe. maybe. No, I yes. Think. I think so. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Round two, they weighed in on the whole second presidential debate. We'll have to see what happens. Round three is coming up Monday. So that's going to be very interesting to see which candidate takes that one. But for now, we're going to go ahead and send it to break. We'll be right back with two more topics that are causing quite a stir, one with a school G using a GPS system to track its students, and the other with re regards to Chris Brown and Rihanna back together. All right. We'll stay with us for those. Welcome back, everyone, for this segment of What's Trending. We're going to get into our second topic right now, which is this Texas school in San Antonio, which is using a GPS system to track its students. Now, what happens is they're wearing these little cards around their neck, and the staff can actually check and see where they're at every moment of the day, whether they're at school, whether they're ditching school. So this has caused quite a bit of a controversial, you know, issue right here because, uh, you know, many people are saying it's a invasion of the students' privacy, while other sides are saying, hey, we're just trying to make sure these kids are at school. So my question to you is, do you think it is an invasion of the students' privacy? Who wants to go? Okay, I'll go first <laughs> again. Um, well, when I first started uh, getting familiar with the topic, I was like, oh, that seems like a good idea. I, I know they need the, the funding with the attendance and to make sure the kids are in class. And I was like, yeah, you know, technology, and that's where we're moving. But then, like, the inner kid inside of me is like, wait a minute, what are you doing? Stop saying that. You know, it's like if I was in school, I'd be the first one to have, like, walkout dates or, you know, back when they first banned baggy pants in school. So I just think yeah, it is an invasion of privacy. I don't, I don't think they should force the kids or punish the kids because they have bad attendance policies, you know. Mm -hmm. I think it costs, like, a quarter of a million dollars to put in place, and they plan on getting, like, two million from the state because mm -hmm. the kids are actually, like, we can prove that we're here. Just change your policy, change your program, figure out another way to do it. I heard kids were already um, not allowed in certain areas, like the cafeteria, or one kid was told, like, if they're not wearing it, they weren't allowed to vote for the prom queen or king. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So And then what's the next step after that? You know, they're, they're letting the teachers the will have to wear them. And <laughs> yeah, you know, where, where do we draw the line? You know, I think it's just one more thing to a, I guess a, a global like the you know the one of the family members was talking about Mark of the Beast you know yeah. if you, you read a little bit in the Bible it just it gets a little scary a little yes. close to that so it, it, it does and I will say this as a parent I find security in knowing that when I think my daughter is at school that she is at school mm -hmm. because there are things that can happen your daughter something can happen on the way to school and by the afternoon the school just now realizes that your daughter is not there. For me, I see it as security. I understand that the school implemented the system so that they can get funding. And if that means more money for better academics, more after school programs to keep the kids out of trouble, I'm all for it. Because it's not following you before school, after school, on the weekends. All it's doing is just saying, your kid's at school and they're in room 102. And honestly, my kid's supposed to be there. And if she wasn't okay with it, well, what are you doing? Why are you not okay with it? Mm -hmm. Something and like I have that. to uh, agree with you. You know, I'm not a parent, but I would think what? that if I, I'm not a parent. <laughs> I don't have kids. But if I did, I think Stop I see, I see <laughs> it as a security uh, feature. You know, there's been so many high, you know, shootings in schools and that right. sort of thing. If something were to happen, a fire, at least you would know. Okay, my child yes. or your child is in this area. Mm -hmm. We know where to go to to have to get them and rescue them. Mm -hmm. So I do see it as a security feature. Um, and. Um, it's a way of funding for schools. Mm -hmm. Yes. It just seems and, and like bigger government to me. I, but, I can't agree with it. I can't go with you guys. But I'm let's sorry. talk about privacy issues. We have GPS in our cars with our navigation. Mm -hmm. We have GPS on our phones. That's totally voluntary, though. But, and I get that. 
I get that. But at the end of the day, it's just saying, hey, your kid's showing up to school or they're not. And they can you, take it off before so they go home. And here, and here, here and before they I, go to president, school. you know, raising their hand is saying that the same thing. Why do we need this? Another invasion of privacy because to be able to Because the say. schools were inflating it. Or they, when they weren't inflating how many kids were showing up to school, there weren't enough. And they but that's bad policy. That's just bad programs. But uh, we need the funding. Programs. The public right. schools need the funding. <laughs> well, the I, thing is, this is probably a model program. Uh -huh. So let's see how it works out and if other schools are going to jump yeah. on this bandwagon. Let's test it with it'll, the panelists. It'll, it'll definitely, yeah. yeah. Let's, I'm let's, fine. See how let's talk to like you guys for a week and I'm see how you like it. I'm always writing to me, so I don't care. So there you are. All right, well. knows what I'm doing. We got to move on to the next topic here, which, of course, again, another controversial one this week. It's having to do with two. Uh, of our celebrities right here, Chris Brown and Rihanna, they're back together, as re reports are saying, and there's been several pictures of them. I think this is a recent one right here of them spotted together. Now, of course, they had a uh, domestic violence past uh, where, you know, Chris, there were pictures that surfaced of Rihanna where she was beaten up and Chris was responsible for that. So my question to you guys is, is this good and bad? Because, of course, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Is this good or bad? And do you think Chris Brown deserves a second chance? How, how I feel is this isn't about good or bad. It goes much deeper than Chris Brown and Rihanna. It, ta it, it is about domestic violence. And this is normal behavior for somebody who's been a victim of domestic violence. And what I can say is, is that people may be frustrated with the fact that she is going back to him. But the truth is, is finally people are seeing what happens in domestic violence relationships. And it is a reflection how we see ourselves. We may not see that we are good enough for anything better. And I just hope that Rihanna has the family and the friend support system to say, if something else happens, we're here for you. All right. And whether or not you agree with it, when I first heard about it, I cringed. I mean, you know, young love, and we've all been there where, you know, we love someone we know we shouldn't be with, but we go back to it. And, yeah. you know, and sometimes you just have to learn those hard lessons, unfortunately. Uh, use this as a conversation piece with your child. If your daughter looks up to Rihanna in terms of her music, you know, talk to her about this. You know, what do you think? This is good, bad? And get that, at least get that conversation going. Domestic violence uh, is, is never the answer, and unfortunately, uh, anyone can become a victim. All right, yes. Johnny, real fast. Um, it's a crazy story. I've seen the bruises on her face. I saw what happened, but I'm like the hopeless romantic type you know forgiveness love conquers all that maybe it'd work out they're in love you know they're going back and forth right. tweeting at each other with these cryptic messages I just you know I'm just the type of guy that hopes it all works out for love you right. know and, and be guy guns you forgive and get past right you know? and we have to remember they were both very very young when yeah. this whole situation happened so hopefully they both learned from the first you know situation that Definitely. happened and they will be able to move on and my we won't see it Chris a Brown trend. has gone in some help exactly yeah, absolutely. he's taking this he did his time, he's, he's on probation, and hopefully he learned his lesson yeah. and they could have a happy family. Absolutely. All right, well, folks, that'll do it for this week's uh, segment of What's Trending. Just want to thank all our panelists here thank again you. this morning. Thanks for having me. It man. was yeah. fun. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Johnny, you did awesome. Awesome. Johnny, awesome. There That's why his last name is awesome. This all right, well, we're going to go ahead and send it to break. <laughs>